the human brain is actually inherently lazy. If folks don't realize that, it's an important thing to understand. The brain was or is organically built to conserve energy, conserve resources for those rare moments where massive resources are required because the brain's primary goal is to survive. So for that reason, the brain creates these biases, what you've heard of as cognitive biases. It creates these biases because biases are a shortcut to reaching a conclusion without having to put any cognitive load on the brain itself. So when you hear about the in-group bias or when you hear about the confirmation bias, or you hear about the bandwagoning, bagwagoning uh, bias, these are all shortcuts that the brain develops over time so that it can reach a conclusion when information is presented without having to critically think about that information. When new information is presented that generates a cognitive load that is in contrast to the core belief of the brain, something called cognitive dissonance occurs. Cognitive dissonance is that, is that effort, that strain, that, that pain in your brain when you're trying to hear something that you don't believe, right? When, when you're trying to hear people talk about a different faith or when you try to hear people talk about you know, what they want from their children that's different than what you want from your children, that difficulty is called cognitive dissonance. And the brain likes to avoid cognitive dissonance. When you intentionally seek out information from the opposite side, like you're saying, Drew, that is guaranteed to create cognitive dissonance. That is essentially like quitting smoking by going cold turkey. It is a very difficult thing to do. It's actually kind of two or three steps further than what I would recommend people do first. If you're liberal and you want to test the information that liberal media is giving you, don't start listening to Fox News. That's going to be the exact opposite. That's a huge 180 degree shift. Instead, start reading European news because Europe is very liberal, but Europe has a very different structure than we do here in the United States. If you think about going back to our conversation about taxes, inside the United States, the average person pays about 19% taxes. That's why the government relies so much on big corporations to build their tax base, because they can only get about 19% from the average citizen. Across Europe, the average tax base is closer to 40%, which means the government doesn't need corporations to fill its tax base. Individuals pay those taxes. So corporations have less sway, less impact in Europe than they do in the United States. So if you wanna know if what you're reading in your liberal newspaper or your, or your left-leaning media in the United States is correct, you can actually start looking for corroboration in French newspapers and Spanish newspapers and British newspapers and German newspapers. They writ they're written in English, so can you find the same information corroborating what you've got here? It's gonna be much less difficult to get new information that's vetted rather than by going and trying to search Fox News because values are also totally different between the left and the right. So what makes headlines for a left-leaning newspaper may not even make the back page for a right-leaning newspaper because the values of those political bases are so different. That's great advice. And you know, I would even say a little step further, I'm not a fan of any of the sort of legacy or traditional media that's out there there is nothing against them. It's actually, there's even just better sources that are out there that are going to cover topics that you might not come across. You know, one of my favorite podcasts is a show called Breaking Points. And you have one person that traditionally comes from what you would think of as more conservative, although you can't put him in one bucket. And another person that comes from more of a liberal background. And they all have so many different thoughts. And, you know, one, the liberal person was previously on MSNBC. And she's like, there were topics that I cared about that I couldn't even talk about on mainstream news because if it wasn't something that people would click on right away or watch right away, it wouldn't get attention. So what do people from different perspectives think about any aspect of politics, health, other stuff? And how does listening to different voices actually help you see the different perspectives that are out there? And then you can make up your own mind. And even better, there's many times where I'm like, I'm actually not informed enough to have a strong opinion. So if somebody asks me, what do you think about this? I'm like, 
you know what? I'm learning about this, but I don't have a strong opinion because I'm kind of, why should I have a strong opinion about everything? I'm just learning about it. It's like, do you have a strong opinion about quantum physics? I don't know anything about quantum physics, so why should I have a strong opinion about that thing? So I think getting those perspectives and especially the rise of independent media is actually really exciting because we can have a whole bunch of topics covered that we never previously thought were going to be covered in traditional sources. Freedom! It's a fresh song.